M. Night Shyamalan has a new movie out and it's like a game of Russian roulette if you should open this door or not. Because the man is very inconsistent with his films. I'm happy to say though that I have thoughts about the movie. So join me and we'll talk about him. M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong has done some amazing films over the years. Well, amazing might be too, too large of a word. But he's done some solid films. The Sixth Sense. Unbreakable. Signs. I do enjoy Signs. And I will say, out of the whole M. Night catalog, Knock at the Cabin feels the closest to Signs. No, there's not aliens in this. Or are there? This is going to be spoiler free. It just came out on Peacock. I checked it out on the cock. You can check it out on the cock if you have it. If you have that service. Once in a blue moon you get something nice out of the deal. I didn't see this in theaters. Unfortunately, I was dealing with family issues and movies keep coming out and I just wasn't able to get out and see it. So I was very happy to sit down and watch this with my wife and we both kind of were left with a resounding, eh, it was okay. It was okay, it was all right. I'm a stickler for the runtime. So seeing one hour and 40 minutes, that touched me in places I appreciate. And this movie didn't overstay its welcome. It had a nice pace, had a nice clip to it. It gets on with things very quickly. The premise is beautifully simple. You have a family of three. A young girl and her two fathers. Yes, two dads. So progressive. It's 2023, people. If you're not on board that train yet, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Why are you even watching the film? When is in the front yard picking daisies when a man named Leonard comes along, played by Dave Bautista. He's going to inform Wen that things are not going to go well for her family coming up as they're going to have to make a choice. Eric, Andrew, and the little girl are going to have to decide which one of them is going to die. Because the fates have willed it so. Leonard and his small team of followers have been given visions from a higher power that unless this family makes the ultimate sacrifice, the world will end within 48 hours time. I believe it's akin to the trolley experiment. That might not be the right name of the experiment, but essentially you have the decision to choose one track or another. Going one way kills a whole bunch of people, going another way saves them at the expense of another. Either way, Someone's got to die. That's all I'm going to say about the plot. Now, why does this remind me of Signs? Well, it has this kind of higher power premise. Mel Gibson leaves the church behind. His wife's saying a bunch of gibberish. Is it true? Is she being touched by an angel? Or is it just the ramblings of a woman on her way out? You have the skeptics. You have the believers. You have this mystery, this dire situation that seems like it's impossible to escape from. Both movies also have this calming demeanor to them. Uh, the, the presence is very intense, yet somehow it stays kind of cool. Kind of cool as a cucumber. Where Signs is the better movie for me, if you don't like Signs, I mean, that, that's your thing. But I like Signs. And where it works better than this one is it goes all in with the concepts and it has a great final act. Whereas Knock at the Cabin, which is based on a book, I don't know how much it takes from the book, it kind of dropped the ball for me in the final act. Waiting for that M. Night twist or some aha grandiose moment to come that never does. So we're just kind of left with a, well, that was, that was still fine. It was entertaining. It kept me on the hook. The acting's solid. The dialogue's not like awkward and stilted. M. Night usually has that going on. But here, I thought it all really worked well. Visually, it's gorgeous. There is some in and out of focus stuff that could get annoying for some. It definitely gets blurry at times. The, the news reports that come on the TV, maybe the best handling of those I've ever seen. Usually when there's like a news report, which M. Night loves to go to, that's also in signs, by the way. You kind of see the bigger picture play out on a TV screen somewhere. Here, the, the news stuff is actually really well produced. It's not schlocky, that often seems the case. So yeah, I really don't have any complaints from the visuals, from the audio, the music's really good. It sounds good. It was nice seeing my boy Rupert Grint in this, Ron Weasley. He's all grown up. Wish he had more screen time because he's solid when he's there. And I have to give special props to the girl who plays when She nailed it. Long story short, yes, Knock at the Cabin was worth my time. I think it's worth yours. It's an hour and 40. 
It's a mystery. It's got intrigue. It's got suspense. It's got a little bit of graphic stuff going on. I definitely wouldn't show a kid who's under like 13. All right, let me know if you saw Knock at the Cabin. I apologize it took so long to get this review out. So like I said, I, I just missed this one. I missed it at theaters, so I apologize. Um, let me know if you saw it. Give me a comment below. Please like the video and subscribe if you're new here. I don't know if YouTube actually tells anyone about this channel outside of the people that are subbed. Hey, if you are new, if you got this from a recommendation, oh my gosh, please let me know in the comments. I, I have to know. I have to hear it from you. And if you are a subscriber, hit that notification bell. That's a thing still. You got to be notified of new videos. I looked at the backend analytics. That's something an adult creator can do who's been on YouTube for over a decade now. And it told me something terribly staggering. Like I was actually taken aback. I, I literally staggered. I was like, oh, only 10% of my subscribers have hit that bell, which explains some things. So yeah, knock, knock that thing out of the park. Comment, like, share, all that crap, and answer this door because I think not get the cabins worth your time. All right, take care.